information has the power. Because if I'm controlling what I, what, what you get, then I can determine uh, how much of that you're going to get. How much information I'm going to give you. And then I determine if I'm in control of the information, whether the information is accurate or not. Because you don't know. Oh, no, man. You don't know. You, you only know what I, I'm telling you or what I'm disseminating to you. You only know that. So so whose report uh, uh, will we believe? I mean, whose report are we going to believe? Who is really who, telling the truth? Amen? Is it the news? I mean, because when you turn to your various news sources, some of them say the same thing. Some of them say different things. They got different people with different opinions saying different things. But really, don't nobody know. That's right, man. That's right. Thank you, Lord. That's right. They giving us what they think. Uh -huh. What they think about it. And then they're looking at numbers and data and all that too. And that information can be skewed depending on what source you're pulling it from. So when we listen at the news, you know, I always say you got to take information that you're receiving with a grain of salt depending on the kind of information it is. Amen. So what we're talking about today is, is whose report, I mean, who is it that we should be listening to? Come on. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Who is it? Who, is who should we be listening to and who should be the main source of our information? Like I said, is it the news? Because you got plenty of news outlets. Uh -huh. <laughs> is it social media? Is it Facebook? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Is it Facebook and, and all those other various social social media outlets? I mean, who, who is it that we are to believe? Yeah. Is it our next door neighbor? No. <laughs> uh-huh. Is, is it the one that sit under the tree? No. Is it the one sitting in the backyard? I mean, really, what? from because most of the time the information we receive we're not getting it straight from the horse's mouth we be being passed information from somebody and by the time it gets to us that information has been polluted it's not been changed somebody done added something to it or took something away from it uh -huh. you gotta yeah. you gotta go ahead yeah so so whose report should we believe That's right. you know the first report I got I heard Ann was across the railroad track uh -huh. but, but, but but the next time I heard it, Ann was on the sidewalk. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead, bitch. <laughs> then two or three times but after that, Ann was in traveling down. I saw Ann at Walmart. <laughs> so I mean, really, whose report right. will we believe? Right. I mean, from where we get our information from? And, and what is the source of the information we receive? And I'm not just talking about the information related to the pandemic, but because we hear it all the time, you, you know, we touch on it because it's in our face all the time. Yes, yes. But I'm a person who's very careful about what I allow to infiltrate my mind because I don't want my mind distracted and pulled in 50,000 different directions. I need to have a central focus. Be included in the 
going to believe the report of the Lord. And so in John the 14th chapter, I'm just going to read a few verses from that. But in John the 14th chapter, uh, Jesus was talking with the disciples. And, and this was before Jesus went to the cross. He was on his way to be crucified. And he was sitting and he was talking with his disciples, right? And so he starts out by saying, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. And so that same word that Jesus was giving to the disciples is the same word for us right now. Let not your heart be troubled. In other words, don't let your mind fall or fail just because things are happening in the world. This ain't nothing new. It's been happening since man entered the earth. That's right. Uh -huh. The Bible says that a man gave is full of trouble. Uh -huh. That's the word. Thank you, Lord. Woo. And so what Jesus was saying to the disciples was let, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. And at this time, he was talking to them and comforting them because he was getting ready. They were getting ready to crucify him. And then they were persecuting the disciples or any follower of Jesus Christ. So they were living in some dark times. They were living in some perilous times. Just like we are right now. But Jesus said, listen, don't worry. Don't be troubled. Don't let your mind be in despair. Thank you, Lord. Uh-huh, because you believe in God. Believe also in me. Why? Because I am God. I'm God manifested in the flesh. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I'm the visible manifestation of God. Hallelujah. So your heart don't have to be troubled again. Whose report? Will we believe? That's right. And then Jesus began to tell him, listen, don't let your heart be troubled because guess what? You believe in God, believe also in me because guess what? In my Father's house. Uh -huh. So in other words, in God, there are many mansions. And he ain't talking about these two-story, three-story, 25-bedroom houses that we live in right now. Free preacher. Free preacher. He's not talking about a natural mansion, a natural house, but he's talking about in God there's a dwelling place. In God there's a place of refuge. There's places of safety. In God. Oh. Yeah, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank, Thank you, God. So we don't have to be worried and we don't have to be troubled because we have a dwelling place, right? We have a covering. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you, Lord. God. Yeah, the, the, the writer said he, in Psalm, he shall hide me in his pavilion. Thank you, 
Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Jesus began to tell him, listen, in my father's house, there are many nations, right? Uh -huh. If it wasn't so, I wouldn't have told you. You see his report? Uh -huh. If it was a lie, I wouldn't even say it to him. Yeah, but I'm telling you this because it's the truth. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Uh -huh. Thank you, God. This same Bible tells us that in him, talking about in God, we live, move, and we have our being. Yeah. Thank you. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, God. Uh huh. So if it wasn't the truth, uh huh, uh, God, if it, God tell us if it's not the truth, I wouldn't even say it to you. Why? Because he can't lie. That's right. He can't do that much to tell the truth. He is the truth. Amen. And he said, I go to prepare a place for you. That's what he was telling the disciples. And again, now this was before the crucifixion. And what he was telling them, because I thought about this for a long time. Because we get kind of caught up on geographical location, you know, when, we, when they say place, we, we're looking for some, some, some place, exactly. We're looking for a location. But I began to ponder over this little piece, uh, and, and it's a message all by itself. But I was pondering over this because when he was with the disciples, he told the disciples, I'm going to prepare a place for you. But when he was on the cross, actually on the cross, hanging between two thieves, uh -huh. mm -hmm. The one thing said, uh, if you really be the son of God, uh -huh, save yourself and save us too. And he wasn't trying to amend his way, nor was he sorrowful for the sins or the things he had done. But the other thing said, hey, look, we deserve to be here. Yeah, yeah. And I'm just paraphrasing, but this man had done anything. And, and, and then all he said is, Lord, when you come into your kingdom, remember me. And Jesus told him this day, yes, not tomorrow, not not okay, you wait here, you keep hanging here, and I'm gonna go get a place ready, then I'm gonna come back and receive. But Jesus said, right now, this day in this very hour, you're gonna be with me in paradise. Why? Because God is paradise. Uh -huh. And wherever God is, that's heaven. Wherever God is, that's paradise. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank so Lord. when he told the disciples that he was talking about, I'm going to the cross. Right? It could mean an actual location or something, or it could mean position. And Jesus was telling the disciples, I'm going to prepare a place for you because he hadn't went to the cross. So in other words, what he was saying, I'm going to secure your position. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Why? Because man had sinned from the beginning, right? He had broke fellowship with God. And it took God, created himself a body, manifested in human form through the Virgin Mary,
but you can't live any kind of life. You got to live a life that's set apart. You got to live a righteous life. Yeah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. But I hear people all the time. They constantly smoking and drinking and, and cursing and swearing and out of the same mouth. But I thank Jesus for blessing me. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. I know God will make a way. But that's what most people want. They just want God to bless them. Yeah. They want the benefits of God. Yeah. Uh -huh. But they don't want to pay no dividends. Mm -hmm. 
And the Lord heard their cry, just like he's hearing our cry right now. The Lord heard their cry. And then God sent them a deliverer by the name of Moses, uh, along with his brother Aaron, right? Yeah. To go tell Pharaoh to let God's people go. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And after all the plagues happened and, 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 and Pharaoh's army got drowned in the Red Sea, and after all of that, the children of Israel was wandering around in the wilderness. Listen, uh, God's report is infallible, right? God got a proven record of what he can do, right? God can take nothing and make something out of it. Yes, sir. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. And the children of Israel was walking around in the wilderness, right? They got so hungry out there. Now, look, they didn't have no Walmart. They didn't have no dollar store. They didn't have a dollar general. There was no public there. There was no bad house to mall or whatever mall you to buy no clothes. There wasn't none of that there. They didn't have no house with a roof over it. Move from 
from one state to the next state. I just keep on living at the uh -huh. Thank you. Hallelujah. So what we got to worry about, and I'm going to close with this. The Hebrew boys say, you read about them. They say Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, right? Uh -huh. Nebuchadnezzar threw them in the fire furnace because they had the report of the Lord. They had a report that Nebuchadnezzar couldn't touch, right? They chose to believe the report of the Lord. And he threw them in the fire furnace because they refused to bow down to him. We got to be the same way. We can't bow down to any other God or any other, any other ego that exalts itself as God. We can't bow down. That. But we are humble, we are in humble submission to the true and living God, right? That's right. And, and, and the boys say, Oh, uh, okay, live forever. Uh, but we are not gonna bow down to you. Why? Because we got another report. <laughs> we got a report of some greater work. Things you can't do, things you don't know, because you're not all knowing. You don't have all power. You can't be everywhere at the same time. But we serve a God. Uh-huh. That's what we say. Amen. And then they told him, when he said, well, we're going to throw him in uh, a fire of fire. The, the boy said, well, look, uh -huh. even, if, even if he don't deliver us, guess what? He still can. Yeah, that's he still can. Yes, he he still can. And the old king, y'all know, he you know, read the story. The old king, he was so scared. He was scared. That's why he, he had a restless night, couldn't sleep, because he knew it was wrong. For throwing them in that fire of fur. He jumped up so early that morning to go see if they were burnt up. Uh -huh. And when he looked in there, he turned around. Like, Didn't we not put three men? Yeah. Come on. But behold, I see four. And one of them looked like the son of man. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. It's the same way now. Yeah, yeah. Even when we don't see God with our natural eye, as Pastor Rob always said, he is still the undercurrent. He's moving when we don't even see he's moving. Right. Or when we don't even think he's moving. God is still moving. He's yeah. working on our behalf, right? Yeah. And whatever has happened, and whatever is happening right now, is all for a purpose. Yeah. And all I need to be focused on is God and know that all things, oh. whether they're good or bad, all things oh. are working together for my good. All things are working together yeah. for our good. So we don't have to be in despair. We don't have to be scared and afraid and high not like 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 we don't know what's going on. We all we need to do is stand firm yeah. in our faith. Yeah. So we do thank God for the word of God today. And again, whose report will you believe? Yeah, yeah I choose to believe, uh, and I'm going to believe, and I am believing uh -huh. the report of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Be blessed.